Use a good quality tearaway stabilizer and pin around the edge of your hoop to stop any uh, movement of the stabilizer. Now put your hoop into your machine and we've got our pieces of fabric here. Now first thing we're going to do is we're going to stitch down our background fabric for our outside flap. Just using some PU here, which has got a, a glitter on it. Stitching quite close to the edge at the top and bottom of this, and there basically because I had a piece that was big enough. So we're going to stitch our leaves first. Now the leaves are just uh, decorative in some cases, and in other cases they're going to be just a open leaf which we can stitch the centre out of to create our reverse applique. So the triple stitch outlines will be, when they're not filled, they'll be cut out. When they are filled, they'll be left alone. Okay, so now we will go on and start doing our three-dimensional flowers like we have here. So to get the best quality flower, you want to make sure that your bobbin is balanced so you've got uh, a nice amount of bobbin fill showing on the back of your work. When I say a nice amount, they're probably a little bit more than a third. And then you've got your outside embroidery color on, on the edge of that as well. And it needs to be nice and smooth. Slow down your machine if you need to. And there we want a nice, smooth satin finish. The flowers are done in three and four stages, and then the centers will be done last. That will be actually after we've done a few more different items on this flap. This project lends itself to such a vast array of colors, so personalizing it will be really, really easy. So there's seven flowers all together. I do stop and trim off any loose ends because I don't want those being a nuisance once we cut our flowers. Here we're coming to the end after doing our flowers. So now we need to trim the insides out of our leaves. Now you can do it either with a sharp pair of scissors. I'm using a craft knife, an X-Acto knife, which is, a, which is a blade. It's just a static blade. Not everyone likes using these. It um, depends on how much work you've done with a, a knife like this. Now this one's a Fiskars brand. Very, very easy to use, nice and sharp, and it worked very, very well. And so just we just work inside the row of stitching. Now, if there are some jagged points at the corners or what have you, we'll just tidy those up with a pair of, of snips later. Most important thing is that you actually get it nice and even, but you can't cut your stitching. Came very close a few times, but didn't manage to quite do it, which is good. Okay, so... As you can see, there's some little hairy bits in there. Get a little bit of a haircut. Just to make, keep the, the shape nice and sharp. So, that's using the, the, the knife. We can just use a pair of scissors, but you've got to pierce that first. Now, these ones are blunt ends. So, first we need to just make a, a mark in there so we can start cutting. And it's just as easy to do this there, but 
I found personally I've got, got, got quite um, big fingers, so um, I find using little scissors like this there for a long period of time, they're quite annoying because they get stuck on my thumb. So I don't think it's as clean a finish as using a knife. By the same token, you can tidy it up. So I go back and use the knife. So I just wanted to show you can use scissors. The more you use the little blade, the better you get. Okay, so there we go. That's our holes cut out of our leaves. So we're going to put in a contrast fabric underneath these holes so as that we have what we see as our reverse applique. Now, we couldn't put the fabric on and then cut out because there's too much fear of cutting the fabric. Next stage, before we move on too fast, is we want to flip the, the hoop on and we want to trim around the edge of our embroidery, around the edge of our flowers. So we're just going to trim the, the actual embroidery thread, not the, the, um, not the bobbin fill thread, just the edge of the embroidery thread. Now try and keep it out to the very, very edge and try and keep it even because when it's even, when you pull it through from the right side, the flower will look even or the petals will look like they're in the right shape. Take little snips at a time and make sure you get all the threads. Now, I'm just lifting this up so you can see what I'm actually doing. It's, it's time consuming but necessary. So those two mats that you can see there, I, I put underneath the hoop. Because when I, when I work on this on the flat table, um, I like to actually have something which is going to support the the hoop or the stabiliser in the hoop so as it doesn't get stretched. So it's sort of like packing the hoop out from the the right side so as it doesn't get too stressed and stretched. Right, just make sure every thread is caught, is, is snipped. It's very easy to just miss one. Go around, just make sure that you get them all. Right, now from the right side. This is actually an all again, it's by Clover in there, but it's just got a little funny little wee hook point, or not a hook, it's got a, a point on it in there, but it's, it's, um, it's curved. Ideal for getting the fluff out of um, the applique or the dimensional applique. And down the other end of this all, there's actually a little eraser which takes the fluff out of the back of your work. So you need to go through and do each of those flowers so as they're dimensional. Now we're going to turn this over and we're going to attach our reverse applique fabric so we have some dimension through those leaves. So this is just a piece of foiled fabric. Attach it to our hoop. Attach it quite securely because it, it's got to, to go through um, and do the centres of the flowers to hold it on. So just attach it quite firmly. And then we're going to return this to our machine and the centres, the, the scrolls and spirals of our flowers will start to be done. First of all, we're going to actually just stitch around the outside perimeter of those leaves. And this will be actually the outside perimeter line of our actual flap. So that holds this fabric into place. And then we'll go in and do some of the Just taking that washi tape off so as that it doesn't roll up and get caught. I'm just going to catch the corner. I'm just going to put a little bit of washi tape in the corners um, if, I, if I need to, just in the actual corners themselves. Now, it's 
the fabric's a bit free. The fabric's a bit free because we haven't used the entire piece of fabric. We've only just done the silhouette of the actual flap. So I'm just going to tape those two corners down. Now we're going to do the centers of the each of the flowers. So it's going through this reverse applique fabric, and that was what will hold it in place. Because normally when you do a reverse applique, you actually stitch around the the holes that you've cut, but we can't do this with the, with this design because some of those little uh, bridges between the leaves the, of the PU are just so fine that they would actually move while they're being stitched. So this is quite sufficient. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be quite secure, and it's going to be uh, quite durable. Each flower center for us, well, I think I had a pair of colors for each one. They've either got a spiral or they've got some dots or um, depending on what the flower is there, but that's completed now, and we're going to do one more thing, which is we're going to actually put our back on our flap. There's our spiral, and you can see we've got little dots, and that's all come all the way through. So we didn't want to have our lining on the other place, so we didn't see those stitching lines of the centre of the flower. So we're going to put our our lining onto the back of our flap, So this is what we're going to actually see on the back of the flap. And I've put a little bit of interfacing on the back of that to give it a little bit of fortitude. Not because the flap needs it, it's because we're going to be putting in a magnetic clasp. And the magnetic clasp really does need to have um, some support. Otherwise, it's going to just pull out. So back to the, it's going to run around this outside silhouette perimeter stitching again. That's going to attach the lining onto the back of this flap. Then we need to start trimming this up. So we're just trimming one to two millimeters away from the outside stitching. Having two rows of stitching around here, which we've just done, means it's quite secure. You may need to, well, you do need to undo your perimeter stitching um, line of that piece of PU first um, so as it's free to handle because that's been tacked down by machine. So we just actually just trim those stitches out. And we're going to now do exactly the same thing for the back lining. Uh, we're going to trim up to the stitches. We've got to keep it quite neat and even and as close as we can without cutting the stitches, of course, because this is then going to be our edge which we're going to satin stitch decoratively. Change out our bobbin and for a matching top thread. And we're going to do first our perimeter run. So it puts yet another row of stitching around the uh, Then we'll be doing our fill to fill up the edge. And then our satin stitch around the outside edge. This will just rip out of our tear away. Right. 
If your chair away wasn't really clean, then you could actually actually um, use a flame of a, uh, a lighter to actually um, just burn off some of the fluff that might be hanging out from that seam. Now we're going to put our magnetic clasp on the back and we're going to find the center of our flap and come up, um, I think it's an inch and a half. And that's going to be the cross here for us to put the that center piece that of our magnetic clasp. So we use the washer, we line the washer up and mark the two holes on the sides which will actually be then we will then cut so as those prongs of the one half of the clasp can go through the fabric. So we just put those prongs through those cuts. Turn it through. Put the washer on. Then I open, I butterfly out those prongs there. Some people fold them in on each other. I like folding them out. So our next stage is going to be making our purse. So we want to put down our placement line for our first piece of uh, batting. And we're going to be putting a zip on top of this. So we need to trim out a batting. One to two millimetres away from the stitching, all the way around. As you can see, just up by the machine there, I've made a couple of, of um, loops for my D-rings, so as it can be in a shoulder bag, so a strap can be attached. So I put the, the hoop back into the machine. And we're going to do our placement lines for our zip. When you look at a bag, a zip always closes with a zip to the left hand side. So these markings are for us to put the zip tape on. So the edges of the zip tape should sit centrally and the teeth over the center line of stitching and I'm just going to just hold this in place while I generally don't um, I don't uh, use washi tape on a zip, I generally hold it into place but I do suggest you put washi tape at either end, perhaps one in the middle. Every machine has its different ability of doing zips. The one thing we do need to do is make sure that that zip stopper stays out of place. We want to, we want to Attach it with some washi tape to the frame so it does not get in the way of any stitching. That will be disastrous. We want to put our lower front panel on. That just sits quarter of an inch past the zip tape. That, that cut edge of that piece of fabric, or in this case it's a piece of cork. And then we want to turn over the back and we want to put the reciprocating piece of lining on. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to position it up quarter of an inch past the stitching and put that piece of lining on. That piece of lining is actually going to stay in that position even though it's stitched. Um, until we have the front detailing quilting done and the other side of our magnetic clasp in. So that row of stitching was now going to sit, we're going to stitch through that again so it's going to hold the lining on. Then we're going to end up pulling our piece of front fabric or our piece of cork there over to the left hand side and then stitch that in position. Now that lining piece is still just sitting there. We're going to eventually fold that lining piece up and, um, and pin it to the edge of our stabilizer on the hoop because we don't want it to get in the way. 
There we go. So just put it, hold that there, wrapped around the edge of the hoop, hold it with a couple of pins. That eventually will be unpinned and dropped down once we have completed the front quilting and adding the magnetic closure. I'm just going to trim a little bit of that cork off because it looked like it was too big. Now we're just doing our quilting on the front of our front panel. And when this is finished, the machine is going to stop and I'm going to change thread color. And we're going to put the cross here in to show the position for the opposite side to the magnetic closure. You can just sort of see it the those reds, those red stitches. I'm just going to actually mark my two positions where I'm going to cut. With I'm just gonna I'll just use a, a a seam ripper. Try and get in there to put those prongs on. Now sometimes you need to give it a little bit more of a trim on one side. Right, put that, oh, there we are. So there's the prongs through, wash it on, open up those two prongs. Okay, so that's that secure. I open them up because I think it makes them tighter, those prongs. Right, now let's position the, our lining into place. We don't want any pleats in it, so make sure that that's sitting nice and flat. And then it's just going to stitch around the perimeter. And it's going to hold the lining in place. Now we're going to do a placement line of where we want to actually put our flap on. Now our flap's slightly shorter in this design because um, it being a sort of an asymmetrical flap, so we you bring it in about a quarter of an inch from the end of our stitching. So as long as it's in the central position between on our start and stop of that line, you're fine. And that piece of stitching at the top of the flap needs to sit to the right-hand side of our placement line, which we've just stitched. Not by much, just it needs to be a good couple of needle widths. Just take your time, slow your machine down if you need to. Right. See, it's just like a quarter, an eighth of an inch, two, two and a half millimeters. And then the machine's going to, we're going to do some placement stitches for our loops. I wanted the loops to come in probably the furthest to the furthest edge of that those tacking stitches, so as they're sitting inside the satin stitching on the the flap. We don't want them to be hanging over the edge of the flap. They need to be sitting on the inside. If they're only caught by a few stitches. That's fine. It's just enough to keep them into place, 
so they don't go awry when we attach the outside of our bag fabric to this. Or we can take this out and have a look at this. Right, so we can see that we have our two D rings. Now, I try and keep those into place quite firmly so as that they don't get in the way of any any needles or feet or stitching. Because when we do our perimeter stitching, the, uh, the stitching comes in a, a good way from the stitching we have already in our hoop, so it can come quite close to that D-ring, which we don't want to. And then we need to open our zip up and put it into the middle, and then put a piece of washi tape over the end of our open zip and just make sure we know where that zip puller is sitting. Everything into place. Now we can put the back on. Now you can put the back on and you can add a piece of batting to it or you can add the batting to the lining at the next stage. It's up to you. When I'm using PUs and corks, I like to be able to see what I'm doing with the, the, the fabrication. So I prefer to actually do this and then put the batting on the next la la layer around. It doesn't really matter. I could jump back a step and do the batting in a second row of stitching after I've done this. It could be, that would be fine. But I just find when I'm dealing with the cork and PUs, etc., they are having batting and the fabric being stitched in one go, I find one works against the other, so. Right. So that's the perimeter stitching. And now we want to put on our lining, which will go on top. With our, our hoops being turned over, putting our lining on, then we're going to put, a, put just attach our lining quite firmly with some washi tape. Then we're going to put a layer of batting on. So that could have gone on already, but I haven't. I'm putting it on with the lining. I still want the sponginess of the batting um, in the back of the, the uh, purse. Okay, so that's where that's going to sit. So it's giving me my sponginess. So just attach that with a little bit of washi tape top and bottom. It doesn't have to be much. It won't move. The the, uh, the batting actually attaches itself to the lining fabric quite well without actually doing anything untoward. And now we're just going to do our last sew round, which is a straight row of stitching. See how far it's come in? Quite surprising. So I just slow my machine down and I stop and start it. just so as the foot adjusts itself in height. And now it's going to do a triple stitch. On the same row of stitching, but the triple stitch will give you a nice firmer edge. So I just stop and start so as the foot can adjust itself. Now we're going past our zip stopper. Let's make sure that is... Right, we are done as far as stitching goes. So first off, let's get rid of any washi tape that might be in the way. And then our tear away, pull our tear away out. Now trim our batting back to our stitching line. We do this so as, we, we trim the batting back so as it's not bulky in the seam allowance.
And now we just want to trim quarter of an inch around the edges and probably just a, a shy quarter around our curves, leaving a half inch step at the opening. I'm creating a half inch step from that line. Trim off our corners. Now we'll turn it through. Turn through for our first turn. Push out our corners. And this is where we'd turn in our, our opening at the bottom of our lining and we'd hand stitch that closed. That opening there, we'd turn it in. And we'd actually finish that. But for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm just going to actually then go ahead and just show you the second turn. You don't have to hand stitch that, you could actually just use a, a, a glue tape or fabric glue. Tear out our tear away around our zip. Get as much of the fluff you can out as possible. If I've got a lot of details happening in a bag like this and I've got lots of embroidery and lots happening, sometimes I might even use a double layer of tear away, um, which means it's a little bit harder to actually open that zip up, but it does ha does work. It just ensures that your project stays in the hoop successfully through the length of the, of the stitching. That's very important. And pull out, roll those edges. Pull those corners out. Get as much of that tear away fluff away as you can. Take the washi tape off the zip runner. Okay. Let's Free those D-rings. Okay, pull that out, pull it out again. A little bit of a light press, not directly on the cork, of course. That's looking good. There we have it.